Welcome everyone. Today is uh, July 14th, 5 p.m. It's a meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Is there a motion to call the meeting to order? I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have, uh, we'll please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one in nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, no minutes to be approved. Our first order of business is on the meeting mail is a letter of resignation from Mike St. Ange. He served on our finance committee for several years. Um, he's resigning from the finance committee. I'd like, just like to say to Mike St. Ange, thank you very much for your service, Mr. St. Ange, on the Finance Committee. You were very instrumental. Um, I wish you the best of luck in future endeavors. Is there a motion to accept the resignation? I uh, make a motion to accept the resignation from Mike St. Ange from the Finance Committee. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Um, aye. Can I a, um, we, we received it after the fact, like this morning, a letter from an Eric Chu who would like to be considered to be on the finance committee. Yeah. Um, so I just figured I'd put it out there today, but we'll accept letters of resi I mean, letters of ex oh, interest, yeah. and then go from there. Yeah, I was just going to say, gentlemen, if you, uh, if you would normally what we normally do is uh, you know usually 30 days, but if you would like. Um, to accept letters of, of interest until July 31st so that we can appoint at our August 4th meeting. That's okay with you, gentlemen. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll be accepting letters of interest for an appointment to the Finance Committee up until July 31st will be the deadline, and we will make the appointment on our August 4th meeting. And the next one is a letter from... Town Clerk, Ms. Labonte, regarding the tree warden, it was a failure to elect, meaning we had a three-way tie on a write-in campaign. Um, three individuals were names were written in, and they all came up with the same amount of votes. We don't know what that tally is. I'm sure Ms. Labonte does, but um, it was a failure to elect. So now that leaves that position for the Board of Selectmen to appoint um, for one year, and it'll, the position will be on the ballot one year from now. So again, gentlemen, if we want to accept letters of interest until July 31st so that we can appoint at our August 4th meeting, and preferably if you want to be tree warden, we would like you to have some construction or knowledge of trees and experience in that category. Is that okay with you, gentlemen? Sure. This works out very well. Thanks. All right. So again, we have an opening for the tree warden. We'll accept letters of interest until July 31st so we can appoint for August 4th. And our first appointment, Finance Committee appointments, we have John Halcroft. Uh, Mr. Halcroft served on the Finance Committee for numerous years, um, went over to the School Committee, back to the Finance Committee. Is there a motion to appoint John Halcroft to the Finance Committee for a three-year term? So moved. And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And our second Finance Committee appointment is for Eric McGlynn. Uh, he's been on the finance committee for, for these individuals that I don't have the years that you served, but um, both great individuals. Is there a motion to appoint Mr. Eric McGlynn to the finance committee for a three-year term? So we'll, and I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have some uh, appointments that we discussed in a previous meeting, gentlemen. Board of Selectmen appointments. The first one is for the Energy Committee. and. That motion would be for David Wona to be appointed to the Energy Committee. Is there a motion? Uh, so moved. And I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Congratulations, Mr. Wona. You are back on the Energy Committee. Thank you. The next appointment is for the Soil Conservation Board, and I will take that position. It's for Kevin Gasper, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen for the Soil Board. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Kevin. Thank you, sir. And the next appointment is for CERTA representative, and that would be Selectman Dave DeRoche. Is there a motion? So moved. Sorry about that. I'll second that. 
Congratulations. Thank you much. See if, see if all those in favor, aye. Aye. See if we can get that. Uh, the yeah. bus service back. Yeah, that's right. See if we can do that, huh? And then Miss Labonte's asking for an appointment to, as an election member, and it is Elizabeth Weaver from Oak Street as an election member. Is there a motion to appoint Miss Elizabeth Weaver as an election member? So moved. Second. For a one year term to expire June 1st, 2021. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, sir. if I could, if I could just put before the board, um, we, years ago, I did serve, and after I left, there was, we had what was called a sort of an ad hoc committee, the Lake Street Improvement Committee. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that committee is still in existence or not. If it's not, I'd love to get maybe get that up and running again. But if it is in existence, I would like to uh, serve, if okay. that's okay. Lisa, can you check the appointment so we can deal with it the next time? Yeah, we kind of left it up until completion. Okay. So we never really close it out. Mm -hmm. The members that were on there, I think, was PM as the town clerk. At the time, was um, Mike Chopper as the select person. Um, it doesn't Dan matter. Menard. Yeah, we'll look at I'm it. Trying to think of who else was we'll on look the book. We'll there is some work to be done. So, so really I appreciate that that incentive that Mr. Walnut is pushing right there. Yeah, so I, think I don't it'd be think great we really <coughs> ever cut it out because we were still doing right. work. Like Dan Menard has been putting the. Years out and all that right, kind of right, stuff. Right. So, we'll just look at the, the previous appointment list that we just got mm -hmm. done doing a couple yeah. of months ago. And uh, maybe you can talk to Roger because he made some uh, uh, conversations about it last year with the Bedford. Right. Since they own the reservoirs. Sure. And okay. He made some contacts with the people there. So. Okay, great. I do know in the immediate, there's a, um, through Mass Highway, they have what's called a shared street grant. And it's a small number, but it's, you know, sort of described as a quick hit for recreational things that get people moving outside and Lake Street may be something that that could be um, eligible for mm -hmm. you know it's not a lot of dollars maybe somewhere in the, the 30,000 range but either for planning safety mm -hmm. or picnic tables something that you know might uh, make any improvement can help so yeah absolutely I mean, if the committee if it's not there, we could surely reestablish it and, and look from okay. right. and, I, and I believe there was even talk of continuing the edge of the roadway right. for fishermen. Mm -hmm. They put mm -hmm. the rocks there by yeah. the beach. The sky's and, the limit. Uh, it's been sitting there for years. So, so we can do it. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. Please, can you just please follow up on that mm -hmm. so we can address that uh, August 14th yeah. as well? And under old business, uh, we discussed some town hall reopening plans for the next phase. Ms. Hebert, would you, um, you want to discuss anything with the board yeah. on? Um, so we kind of, um, where we left off, with all of our different plans we've had since COVID has hit us. Um, right now we have um, all town hall staff back full time. Um, we're so close to the public. Um, I know there have been questions about whether we should reopen to the public and if we do, how we would um, go about that. Um, you know, we've had um, various meetings where we've discussed stuff. I've, I've been in discussions with the um, department heads as well. Um, you know, everybody has concerns and um, you know, I think if we do decide to reopen to the public, we want to make sure that we have all of those concerns addressed. Um, and we're making sure we're, you know, being as safe as possible for both the residents and the um, staff who work here. So um, I think we wanted to put this on the agenda so that we could start some discussion and um, see what the, the appetite of the selectmen is in terms of reopening to the public. Um, I will say I know that um, various options have been um, discussed in the past. Um, Jim has been working a lot to get a um, kind of like a walk-up window set up for a few offices that have the capability, um, the collector treasurer being one of them. Um, if we decide not to open the doors to the public yet, um, we can open up a window service so that if people come and they want a receipt or they have cash, um, or they want to address an issue that they can do so through the, um, the window service for the club treasurer. Um, we've talked about options um, such as having a, a ring doorbell for say the assessor's office where they don't have capability of a lock-up window. Uh, we can have the doorbell at um, the front entrance labeled assessors. Um, so if somebody needs something and they push the, the doorbell, they can have a two-way conversation with the assessors then and there. Um, find out what information they need and the assessor could bring it out to them um, without having to let them in the building. 
Um, another thing that we've been working on, um, I don't know if you'll remember, we got a grant probably in the fall, um, and we, um, with the grant, we were able to get an online permitting system. Uh, it took us a while to get it up and running, but I talked to Jim today, and he is very, very close to having it up and running. Um, we would be using the building department as the prototype, um, so they've uploaded all the forms for building, um, and they are just finishing working out the kinks, but that will be up and running, he thinks, by the end of this month. So um, we, we're still accessible to the public, even right now, um, you know, how we left our last um, procedure was that um, available by appointment. Um, to date, I haven't had any complaints from any residents that they weren't able to be serviced. Um, so even though we're close to the public, we're not closing out the public. We're working with everybody and uh, making sure whatever needs are, are out there, they're being met. <coughs> Gentlemen, I, I just, uh, I'll just comment on that. I, th I think that, you know, for the circumstances that we're under as a, as a town, with COVID-19 and the pandemic, I think we've done a pretty good job of managing this pandemic um, to the public and to ourselves um, as a whole. And we've, uh, we initiated, I don't know, maybe a month ago, we talked with Jim maybe a little bit longer for the reopening is put the plexiglass shields in between counters in, in the pedestrians, the residents. Um, I, you know, I think if we're gonna go to a, a open door policy, um, I would ask that we mask our mandatory requirement on both sides of the counter, whether it, when an employee engages with a resident, the employee's required to wear a mask, any mandatory masks are required. Um, I, I think it's important for us to do that. I think we're all watching the news, seeing the spread in other, other states. Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I think it's because a lot of people are neglecting the fact that they should be in public when they go to stores and things of that nature and wear their mask. Um, and be considerate not only for yourself, but for others. So I don't think it's asking too much for the five or ten minutes you're going to be in town hall doing your business to have a mask on. So. Um, I think that I would be pretty pretty adamant about, you know, mandatory mm -hmm. masks, yeah. um, no matter where you're at. Yeah. So, you know, I, we can we can leave it open for discussion, um, and we all we could we could make a decision today whether or not we want to open the doors at a certain date. I'll throw it out to the board and see what you have to say. Mr. Gross, I'll defer to you as the uh, junior member of the board well, these days. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, well, your, your point of there hasn't been any real issues with what we're doing right now. I look ahead that um, after August 1st, we will have a period of time where we won't have as many people coming to the town hall because that August 1st, you're gonna pay your taxes. So you have a lot of people come in and, and wanna you know, associate that way. So my initial thought is just to, you know, I'm open to, I'm open to opening the town hall. Uh, I'm thinking, Personally, I'm thinking after August 1st, you know, sometime mid-August. I was thinking, I was thinking August 4th would be the first. That's the first Monday in the month. I was. I think the third. I think the third is third. I looked at my tax bill today. Yeah. Let's do it. I mean, water bills. Are, water bills will be going out. They yeah. should be closing out and going out in the next couple of weeks. No, I think they're coming out soon because we just got yeah. our water bills for the town, but Kathy did them for us to close us out. But Yeah, so they'll be in the mail within a week or so, yeah. and tax okay. bills are already out, so right. I mean, some people will miss that if we open on August 3rd. I, I, I don't think August 3rd is an unreasonable date to reopen, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. you know, I don't know. Yeah. Mr. Sure. Chairman, I think if you just look at the, the impact of this pandemic, it's what it's done is really exposed a lot of the flaws in any business model, you know, and I think what this does is present us with a unique opportunity to look how look how we conduct business. You know, um, is it the same old eight to four? Is it new and innovative ways like walk up counters or you know conducting meetings or conducting uh, office hours outside? You know, I, I'm just you know, mm -hmm. and so I think where I'm going with this is that it's going to also how it impacts the employees once. Once and if school starts, you know what that's gonna do. So maybe what we could do is there's a lot of great ideas like masks, and you know you have some thoughts. Maybe ask Julie to put together a little working group of employees and and people who've got ideas, and then come back with a with rec a list of recommendations. So it's not done ad hoc or piecemeal, and we've got a package that we can vote on and look at it from totality. You know, talk with Board of Health and what the, the yeah. you know just. 
be in concert with what's going on with the school department. So we come back, we've got a comprehensive plan that we then can approve and adjust on the fly um, because it's, you know, you got some residents who feel like, I want to walk into town hall. You got some who may be reluctant, mm -hmm. you know, like people who've put off elective surgery, say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on that shed because I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's revenue that we're losing. So, you know, yeah. so I, know oh, I agree. pay your bills online. We charge a fee, but if we want to encourage people to use on, online, does it almost seem fair to charge nickel and dime somebody five bucks when you're trying to get right. them? So I think if we look at it from a comprehensive perspective, mm -hmm. to take you know, into account, we and, and we truly, none of us know how long yeah. this pandemic is going to be around. I'm just, I think, I think even if we were to open, I don't like restaurants, for example. You know, I, there's just still a lot of people that aren't okay with doing it. There's a lot of people that are. Um, it's tough. The economy is going to be tough, and, and we'll, we're going to we'll manage our way through it. We, what Mr. Mona is talking about is similar to what we did in the closure. We worked with our department heads and said, you know, what? Are, how could we go to remote? What are the things necessary, the steps necessary that you see as roadblocks so that we can address those roadblocks? And we put a get together that 30-day uh, remote action plan. So um, I, I'm fine with that and waiting off for a little bit longer. And, and maybe, uh, Ms. Hebert, you can get, you know, in your department head meeting is just say, are there any concerns? And, you know, our ideas of how to do a reopening. And, you know, I think that the busiest, you know, you got um, town clerk's office, really. Right. Um, <clears throat> the assessor's office on occasions, they have people coming in and out to conduct business and then our collector's office, right? Um, mm -hmm. So those are the three offices that I can think of that are the most busy, um, that'll be most impacted by it. So I think that's where, you know, a lot of the a lot of the uh, input will come from. I mean, I know we send out water and sewer bills, but they're all paid for, um, paid through the collector's office. So with tax bills coming in, um, I think a lot of people, as Mr. Wona said, I think a lot of people now are just accustomed to paying online or mailing in a check. And I know there are some residents that talked to me and said, you know, why can't I go into to Cushionitz Town Hall when I can go into Favens Town Hall? I said, well, we're working on a reopening plan, you know, and I'd rather be safe than sorry, you know, and I'd rather, not reopen too soon to find ourselves closing down. Right. Um, I think we're mm -hmm. seeing that in other states right now where they, you know, and I understand it's not like people are coming here to shop. You know what I mean? So it's not like we're losing revenue because we can't sell our goods like a store. It's a little bit different. They're coming in to pay bills, ask questions and things of that nature. I mean, so, you know, that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, what defines, an o what defines an office? Is it part of the drive, you know, is the parking lot? Could that be? You know, one day a week set up for Jim to be out there to deal with residents. Oh, you know, I'm just again thinking outside the box, and we may find that's a ridiculous idea. I don't know, but I yeah. think as long as we're creative, I know you, you, it's tough because weather permit, right? I mean, yeah, it's right. kind of like going out to a restaurant, outdoor dining. I mean, you, you know, you see them. You're at a restaurant, and you got the tent, and it's nice to sit out at the tent, but then it starts downpouring on you, and everybody's running into the building, and so it's just it's it's tough. I mean, it's it's not an easy environment that we're working under right now, and I think we've done a good job managing it, and I don't want to, surely don't want to ruin that um, that hard work that we've done. So Ms. agreed. Um, and if and if I can, um, you know, in talking to the department head specifically, Joe, um, from the board of health standpoint, um, he has concerns just over the fact that, yeah, as we're opening up Massachusetts, there have been more cases. Um, Akushnet, you've said this many times, um, Mr. Chairman, um, we're, we're not fenced off. So it, it, the, the virus doesn't know any bounds. And um, there were, when before everything reopened, we had two or three weeks where there were no new cases in Akushnet. Um, and since everything's reopened, it's come back, um, you know, and it's it's not super worrisome yet, um, but it is coming back. And I think as more things reopen, it, it's um, it makes sense to assume that that number is just going to keep going up. So I'm, I'm with you. You know, we're we're trying to be as cautious as possible, um, but also make sure that the services are available. For Can you also um, speak with the treasurer collector's office? I think it'd be good for the board to know. Um, I think we can run the numbers. Today you know how many people paid you know online mm -hmm. how many people paid by check um i, I know how much money is paid online huh i can tell you how much how much money is paid online so we can't <laughs> i think it's yeah. good to know like how many people are physically well we, you know we we know what our what 3300 residents paying residential tax payers so how many of those, what percentage of that 3,300 paid online? What percentage of that paid by check? And then what's remaining, you know that they came and, and paid by cash. Mm -hmm. For instance, 
I'll Thank use you. myself. I came into town hall one day um, and I paid with cash. Yeah. You know? Um, but I'm sure there wasn't a lot by cash and then I know we have the box out there, but I think that there's yeah. a lot of people that are very reluctant to leave cash inside of the cash box, which we did not encourage. I'm sure we may have gotten a couple of people that may have done it, but I know that people, there's, there's also the fact that people, when they, even if they pay by check, they like to have a receipt. Yeah, you know? well, and, and I think this um, goes along with, you know, we're, we're working with people and trying to um, do as much as we can. So yeah, we haven't encouraged cash in the lockbox, but I think Lisa, you were even telling me today, somebody came to the door, um, Lisa talked to them, they, they had cash to pay their bill, they wanted a receipt. Um, Karen worked with them from the treasurer's sure. treasure office. Um, they left the cash in the drop box. Karen went right out to get it, get, came out and, and brought a receipt from for his car. So, um, you know, it's the, there's nothing set in stone, but we're always willing to work. We have great staff. You could, if you could just look at the numbers and, and yeah. you know, just to see check wise. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know. So, Chairman, when are we meeting next? Next, the, uh, next Tuesday. We were gonna. I was gonna ask for a quick meeting next Tuesday, okay. um, just because uh, Mr. Menard's got some projects that he wanted to do. I didn't feel like we'd have enough time. I'm trying to keep our meetings down and not be in the two or three hour meetings like we have been in the past. I think we were a little disorganized in the past. Um, you know, so the agendas were a little overloaded. I've been working with Miss mm -hmm. Hebert um, to keep the agenda scaled down mm -hmm. um, based on what I know from my experience, how long some of the issues will be to talk so that we can, you know, we'll be here for an hour, hour and a half, maybe the most. Um, but I know that as uh, Mr. DeRoche knows, because he was part of it for the last year where we've been sitting here for two and a half, three hours, it's Miss Leonard and Miss Hebert will mm -hmm. tell you. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, it's not fun. It's not a good business. It's not, it's not, it's not. So, um, with that being said, gentlemen, if we don't have anything else, I mean, maybe we could throw that on the agenda for a quick, I, I only have a couple of things for next Tuesday. I wanted to give Mr. Bernard um, ample time, maybe 20 minutes, a half hour to come in and talk, speak to the board. Um, he's cut his budget. I'm concerned about some of the, you know, he, he wants to do certain projects, but I don't think we have the funds to do it. So I asked him to come in and let the board know what he's got, let the board say, give the okay, like we used to do in yeah, the yeah. past. That kind of diminished over the last few years, and I think that's bad business practice. I think for the, the people at home, knowing what we're doing as projects like we used to do and have them come in and say, hey, this is what I'm going to go out there and do. Like when we did the Lake Street project, you kind of give that little announcement, the board gives us its blessing. Um, or not, and say we'd rather see our funds be allocated to a different project, you know, whatever it may be, right? So and have that discussion. If next week is, is maybe it's too compressed of a time frame, the following meeting, maybe Julie could come back with that would the be August fourth. Yeah, so yeah, so then the reason why I'm asking for next week to have a quick yeah, meeting with Mr. Manad is because the following week we have a couple of scheduled vacations. And I don't want to interrupt anybody's vacation yeah. time for us to have a selectman's meeting. Mm -hmm. So, so if it's all right with you, gentlemen, maybe I'll make a motion to direct uh, Ms. Hebert to establish a working group, come back with a recommendation to the board on August fourth, on, on August fourth, August mm -hmm. on a comprehensive plan on how we're going to handle the next, say, between now and the end of the year. Okay, I'll right. second that motion. All right. Very good. All, right. all those in favor, let me make that official. Okay. Aye, aye. All right. Very good. Ms. Hebe, you have anything else to add to that on the uh, um, reopening? Oh, you got everything the board's looking for, so we can, yeah, I'm we can work on that over the next couple of weeks. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, throw it out to everybody this week. Yeah, the only one I know specifically um, that has concerns that we can, you know, we'll bring up is the veterans agent. Um, I think it's similar to the COA. Um, he's, he's brought up concerns where you know, it's obviously an elderly population, um, and he's been managing everything uh, right now, uh, just by appointment, um, talking on the phone, things like that. So I think that's fine. Uh, you know, our, our seniors are—we know that seniors are a vulnerable population. Mm -hmm. So, at no way, shape, or form do I want to put them at risk. Um, yep. That we talked about that for council on aging as well. Yeah. So you know, we, we're, we're I think we're specifically talking about town hall, if I'm correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so town hall, Pony Ways. Um, not really so much library council on agents, so please yep. don't don't overblow it no. into that discussion and try no. to come up with that big collaborative thing. No. It's more so more so for people to come in and, and pay their bills and, and do yeah. their business. I like just know Ron's been concerned before when we've had town hall policies that 
you know, he doesn't want if to. He, really if he's managing it right now by appointment only, I'm, I'm fine with right. that for right now. Perfect. Tell him that we're okay yeah. with that as well. It's our veterans, the uh, utmost respect for our veterans. So. Thank you. Um, no, I, that's all I have on it, though. All right, very good. Gentlemen, our uh, first order of business on new business, which is a little bit of old business, is the Cushion Elementary School roof replacement. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had the uh, operators, the owners, project manager, and the architects come in and, and speak. To, well, through Zoom meetings, speak to the board, give us a quick update. It's kind of been uh, real quick and, and hitting us, Miss Hebert and I. We've been working behind the scenes, um, doing some discussions on this project, and they've given us a basically a budget breakdown. I spent a little bit of time taking a look at the budget breakdown last night i spoke with steve brown which is the owner's project manager this morning for a good 45 minutes because i was looking at some of these numbers and trying to dissect what i could um so i don't know if you can see it because the, the paper is very tiny in nature that's why i just put my glasses on so, so today speaking to him it looks like the total project costs um total project budget is going to be two million Six hundred and thirty thousand one hundred and seventy-three. Mm -hmm. um, the maximum total facilities grant that he's proposing would be one million four hundred and forty thousand eight hundred and thirty-four dollars. So, basically, I did some simple math last night, gentlemen. I looked at the numbers and I said, okay, fifty-seven point seven is the reimbursement from the MSBA grant um, if we if we're eligible for the project. Um, through the accelerated repair program, I think that's what it's called, OP, right, Julie? Yeah. It's OP accelerated um, repair project. Yep. Yep. And so, if you take the fifty-seven point seven and you multiply it by the total pro um, project budget, it doesn't equal the one point four four. It really comes in at one million five hundred and seventeen thousand. So, I spent some time today with the owner's project manager figuring out why there's that discrepancy of roughly seventy-seven thousand dollars. Um, and he told me it's basically because of some of the, it says on the, on the small box in the, in the file left column, um, potentially um, ineligible cost. And what that means is MSBA through their grant program only allows 5% contingency of the total project cost. And what we they built in is 5% is on, on a project of this scope is not um, really feasible. And knowing that we have some asbestos underneath underlying problems underneath of the roof. So um, we talked about it at a previous meeting, Ms. Hewitt and I, when we did a quick Zoom one prior to the last one that we did as a board, that that needs to be boosted up because most um, contingencies on a project of this magnitude represent about an 8% contingency. They're, they're anyone with a 10% contingency because we know we have some underlying problems in the existing roof. So to be comfortable, um, they put in a 10%. And that's potentially ineligible cost, which you can see the total potentially eligible contingency that we're looking at in the first line item is 109,000 more dollars. So basically, I just did some math on subtracting the total project budget from the max total facilities grant that they're proposing that this and would be eligible for. It looks like we would be on the hook for roughly 1.2 million dollars. It's 1.189339, but I'm going to round up to 1.2 million dollars. Um, and that's more of like a 54% reimbursement. Um, and the reason why, so the 57.7 is not gonna change. It's only because of some potential costs that are ineligible from Mass M MSBA. Okay. Is that's being added in there. Um, and that's gonna, what I just did is this simple math again, it reduces it down to about 54%. So, you know, I, I'm looking at the project. I spoke with Ms. Hebert about the project on, on numerous um, topics. Um, I spoke with the OPM again today. Um, you know, looking at where we're at with that school roof, it, it's in it's in dire need of repair. We've been spending anywhere between what, Julie, twenty and fifty thousand bucks in some years in the past three or four years for repairs, patching. In other words, Miss mm -hmm. um, Hebert. At, at the beginning of the conversation, we didn't know where the total project um, budget would come in, so Miss Hebert um, was kind enough. I asked her to run some numbers for us on a million dollars for the for the town share of this project. And she did a 10-year borrowing, a 15-year borrowing, and a 20-year borrowing. And basically looking at the numbers, um, I think it, on a million dollars, we, Julie and I, have, you know, we, we'll have this discussion. We have plenty of time to have this discussion um, as a board on how we're going to continue moving forward with the financing. But I think tonight we have some favorable news if, if the board's going to agree. 
um, that on a 15 year borrowing, we can do it for roughly 83 to 85 thousand dollars a year is what it would cost. Um, and instead of doing a debt exclusion, um, Selectman Wona in the last meeting um, had a, con a brief conversation. I was actually in the other room, but he had a brief conversation and he, and he had briefly brought up the solar revenue fund. Um, and it's something that you know I'm, I'm near and dear to. Um, and I, so I asked Ms. Hebert to run some numbers and it looks like um, we're gonna be able to capture roughly $80,000, is that correct, Ms. Hebert? Yeah. Somewhere in that ballpark of the 80,000 bucks just from our solar revenue fund. Um, so given it being maybe $200,000 more than what we had actually went and priced out for a borrowing, 200,000 bucks, we probably fund that with free cash or perhaps we go, if, if that's the final number, once we get the, the okay from MSBA on August 26, if we need that 200,000 bucks to keep the borrowing at a million dollars, we either take it from free cash or stabilization um, of, in the amount of whatever, as long as it's $200,000. So we have an option we have um, you know, one other thing I want to say about doing this project now, gentlemen, is we have we have the ability MSBA. So everybody at home and the board understands is how they get their funding is it's a collection of the state um, um, sales tax, and it's one percent of state tail sales tax the state takes and puts inside of this kitty for this pro these kind of projects. That's how MSBA is funding projects. Right. Um, sales tax. This, this money's already put in the kitty. We know that because of the COVID-19 discussion that we've just had, that sales tax won't be what it's been the previous year. So I think that it would behoove us not to move this project forward for the simple fact that I, I can almost guarantee you state sales tax won't be anywhere near where it's been in the previous year where this kitty's already there for this 57% reimbursement. So when I asked Steve Brown that, the owner's project manager that today, and he said, you're absolutely correct. I said, what would happen in that scenario if we didn't move it forward? He says, either one of two things, either MSBA takes less applications next year, or MSBA, because of a shortfall in funding, because the 1% of total sales um, tax would be that much less, you might only be reimbursed at 45, 47, 48%. 48 cents, or we'll just call it 48 cents, 45 cents on the dollar versus our 57 cents on the dollar. So, knowing what we know now about how we can do this project, more than likely we can talk about more financing options in the future, but for, for right now, Ms. Hebert and I wanted to just run some different numbers. Um, we also now, in the economy, because of where the Federal Reserve has interest rates pushed so low, we have extremely favorable interest rates, borrowing rates right now. And we all know the higher interest rate, the more money we're spending on the project. So if we waited a few more years and interest rates went up one, two, three percent, it would increase the cost dramatically to this project. Mm -hmm. um, so with all of these, I guess, I'm gonna say favorable conditions right now for, for the Board of Selectmen to make this decision in the town to make this decision, um, I think we're in a really good position right now. Um, I understand it's tough for, for us to be able to say that, but I think that because of the, the hard work that we've done over the years, Selectman Wong and I, you were on the board when we created that special legislation for the Solar Revenue Fund back in 2013 or 14, um, alongside of me, and, and I think it was Mr. Dakin that did it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to report to not only to the board, but to the taxpayers and the residents of Akushna that it is possible, extremely possible, that we can put a roof on our Kushner Elementary School with no debt exclusion. And I think that if we can if we can pull this off, it would be a huge accomplishment um, for the board and, and for the town as a whole. So um, I, I don't know if there's any questions on, on this uh, project. What we do have is just a simple motion to move it. That's the next step is to move this, just to move the motion would just be to move it to MSBA for MSBA's approval at that point, we'll know what MSBA is willing to grant in funding in terms of a percentage and how much of the project they're gonna cost, project cost they'll cost. And we'll have a finalized number then on August 26th. We should get the word from them. That's when they vote on it. And from then, we'll schedule a meeting um, after that um, outcome of the vote. Mm -hmm. And then we can run some real numbers and see where we're at. We could be in better shape. We might be in you know, $50,000, $100,000. We'll see where we're at that time. We have 90 days from that decision from August 26th to schedule a town meeting to get town meetings approval to move forward with a borrowing to do the school roofs. The motion tonight is simply to say, 
the Board of Selectmen so, um, support the project thus far. Mm -hmm. We're going to allow it to be moved to MSBA for their consideration of the project, and we'll find out on August 26th um, what, what percentage they're willing to fund and if there's any snags in any other project costs that the owner's project manager put forward. So, any questions that may be received or that I can answer? Well, I guess my comment is, um, you know, if this is funded, as we as assumed by the solar revenue fund, it's really uh, a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's no, no additional cost to the taxpayers. The roof has to be fixed. I had that discussion, or we had that discussion collectively as a board the last meeting uh, with Arcadis, I believe mm -hmm. is the name of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, putting it off any longer, yeah, the interest rates are going to go up, uh, the roof's going to deteriorate even further. So I think now is the and um, and as I, as I just mentioned, if this can be funded by the solar uh, revenue fund, it's, it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. We have, I believe, two or three solar farms on the books to be established in town over the next upcoming years, so the money should be there, you know, if these we've, projects we've, all fall we basically, through. We basically, we looked at what we have currently, mm -hmm. and we believe we can capture the costs with what we have currently, so, you know, what. I'm always in the mindset that you don't spend money that you don't currently have. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Hebert and I kind of looked at the numbers thus far, and it looks like what we currently have on the books um, are coming on in the next six months, let's say. Right. Because what we captured from Ms. Uh, Koska from the Assessor's Department was only for the first two quarters, and that was 40000 bucks. but that was only for the first two quarters, and we're looking like we're already capturing that amount mm -hmm. of funding. So it's not even to consider any future projects, and like you said, Mr. DeRoche, we have I think three or four in the pipeline. Right. Um, right. So we're not even factoring in those three or four coming mm -hmm. in the pipeline. It's basically what we have already in kind of completion mode. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're, we're doing all right. We'll see what happens and we'll run some more numbers as we get closer to the August 26th once we get some final numbers from MSBA and say, hey, this is what it's going to be. And the board will have that consideration and just make the decision on at that point. You know, we're going to move it to town meeting at a special town meeting mm -hmm. um, and ask for the residents' approval for the borrowing. And, you know, it's not a debt exclusion, and that's what we'll explain to the residents at that point. But mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with everything. Um, I think you touched on it earlier, uh, Mr. Chairman, when you talked about having Mr. Menard come in and talk about some of the big road projects. Um, at next week's meeting, I think it would be helpful if maybe either Kristen Flynn, business manager, or, or Dr. Bailey came in. For us to have a discussion about you know this funding so it's going to be a collaborative effort right and get our get our strategy in place and you know how what the presentation at town meeting will look like that I think there's going to be some collaborative effort I, ideally I'd love to see I know the schools on a um, is on a shoestring budget right now um, but you know what money they might have to put against the project as far as, you know, maintenance, uh, um, you know, in the maintenance budget or their roof repair budget or whatever, um, because at the end of the day, going to the taxpayer is the absolute, absolute last option, mm -hmm. right? And so, if we can use solar, free cash, um, you know, uh, well, like you whatever, mentioned, right? all these different, right? And if there's, mm -hmm. however we cobble this together, sure, you know, I right. think, it just shows a good faith effort on everybody's part that everybody's uh, rowing from the same uh, um, boat, and I think that it's, it's something that needs to be done. So that that would be my wish. Uh, maybe it's overkill, but I think it would be helpful again just to help inform the public that there's a coordinated effort um, between town hall and the school department on this thing. And oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right, right. And also one other piece, I do think since uh, it's SBA as a state agency, it would behoove us after we make the motion to send a letter to um, Senator Montigny's office and Representative Henricks's office to inform them that we'll be dealing with SBA because oftentimes it's very helpful to have uh, our elected officials um, in the know on that in the event that there is uh, some issues. Mm -hmm. When we did the school renovation project, Senator Montigny went to bat for us uh, every step of the way when money either got hung up or extensions were asked for. Um, so I think we just it would be good practice to let them know um, of our intentions as well in the event that we need some uh, help cutting through the red tape. Excellent. I agree. Well, with that, um, Mr. Chairman, I, Dave DeRoche, make a motion that the Town of Akushnet submit the schematic design report detailing the budget, scope, and schedule 
for the Kushnet Elementary School Accelerated Repair Roof Replacement Project to the MSBA for their consideration of establishing a project funding agreement. The Town of Kushnet recognizes that until a project funding agreement is completed, there is no commitment from the MSBA to reimburse funds related to the project. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Ms. Hebert, can you contact Ms. Flynn and Ms. Um, Paula Bailey? Let them know that the board has made the motion to push this thing forward. Um, and, and from Mr. Um, Warner's suggestion as well is maybe we can get them in. It may not be at next Tuesday's meeting because we have some time, but maybe the August 4th. We'll see what's going on with that. But I would, I agree with select the owner to get them in um, and have a, a brief conversation with them. Okay. All right. Because I know that there was an appropriation. Actually, Mr. Warner, you brought up a very good point. There's, there was an appropriation for this. Maybe we don't have to spend that. I don't know. I think it was that was get that came from the uh, solar revenue fund as well. So we'll just see what whatever they have available. Yeah. And throw it out to them so they can start discussing it with their uh, with the school committee. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, next order of business is the end of the year interdepartment transfers. Gentlemen, we have uh, several of them. I'll do my best to get through them. So these are interdepartment transfers. So for the police department, they're looking for uh, $80,330. And in the fiscal year 20, 2020, we had the outgoing chief of police, Chief Alves, retired but continued to work as a consultant, which put his line item over budget. In addition, overtime was an issue as it took nearly nine months to get dispatch shifts covered with full-time officers. Until that point, police covered the third shift at overtime. So we're doing from the department, we're transferring from police $5,000. Selectmen for the salaries from the town administrator that the board saved. Um, we're having the interim um, town administrator and town accountant, $29,700. The town accountant's position, same thing. Board of Selectmen saved some money there, $23,600. And the treasurer collector's office, salaries clerical in the amount of $22,000. $30. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. The next item that we have is in the amount of $50,523, and it's a shortfall in our fire EMS budget. Legislation to approve taking firefighters out of civil service was not approved until November. And the final call an officer wasn't hired until January until that time the open full-time shift was covered with OT so we're doing the transfer from fire EMS energy department 10,000 registrar of voters salaries temporary 6,000 town council legal land court 17,000 town clerk salaries clerical 8,300 street lights energy $2,623, pensions, Medicare, $6,600. The total $50,523. They're motion to approve. So moved. Thanks. Thanks. All those in favor? Aye. The next one is in on control. There was a change in the wage and classification for the salary. The amount of $4,536. Street lights were taken from street lights. Energy, the amount of $4,536. There are motion to approve. Aye. The next one's for uh, miscellaneous $1,700 to move to uh, compensated balances. There were a number of turnovers in town all this year that required the town to cover compensated balances. We're taking that from miscellaneous and celebrations in the amount of $1,700. Then motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And the next one is for CMAS, salaries permanent position. It's in the amount of $6,747. The recycling center hours were increased in fiscal year 2020 after we set the budget. So we had an over expenditure in the salaries. It's going from TPW Highway, salaries permanent, to go into CMAS in the amount of $6,747. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 
The next one is for CMAS. And we're moving it to recycle removal in the amount of $30,000. Recycling costs have increased and were not included in the fiscal year 20 budget. The fiscal 21 budget was increased to cover the higher amount. And we're taking that from Veterans Department, Veterans Benefit, in the amount of $30,000. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one is just a reserve fund transfer in the amount of $12,000. And we're looking for um, a request to purchase some capital items to upgrade the uh, cameras in alarm system in potty ways and town hall. And again, this is just upgrades to the facilities better improve our security. Is there a motion to approve the reserve fund transfer in the amount of twelve thousand dollars? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one is a reserve fund transfer as well, gentlemen, in the amount of $5,000 for EMA. And it's gonna be maintenance and supplies. Uh, there's a request for a reserve fund transfer to purchase capital items. It's actually a server. EMA needs a new server. I know that the Finance Committee's reviewed this before with Ms. Hebert, and they asked uh, some questions about leasing one, but it turns out that leasing would be more expensive. Is that correct, Ms. Hebert? Yeah. Is there a motion to approve $5,000 reserve fund transfer for EMA server? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Next one's going to technology. It's the network techs for a thousand one dollars. It was additional expenses to complete a wiring project to get internet access to the fire station, and that's coming from street lights from the energy. Street light budgets from the energy line item, the amount of one thousand and one dollars. There were motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Next one is from planning for salaries clerical due to the COVID-19, the secretary planning um, board secretary had to change around some, do some different additional hours because of uh, preparation and reschedule and those meetings. We're taking that from street lights, the energy um, line item, the amount of $615. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Next one's town building salary temporary. In the amount of one thousand eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars, some help workers were able to start hours earlier due to the COVID nineteen and school closures. More projects have been able to be completed and transferred from the building department's budget. Salaries clerical in the amount of one thousand eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars. There a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next one is for the water fund, salaries business manager in the amount of $4,561. The employee salaries were re reallocated between highway water and sewer with a higher emphasis on water, which led to the line item going negative. So we're taking from the water fund and engineering fees and we're covering those costs in the amount of $4,561. There a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Very good. Hey. All right, we got through that pretty good. Thank you, gentlemen. Town clerk has a uh, election warrant for the state primaries. She needs us to announce the on Tuesday, the first day of September, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose: to cast their votes in the state primary election for the candidates for the following offices: senator in Congress for this Commonwealth, representative in Congress, 9th district. Council of 1st District, Senator in General Court, 2nd Bristol and Plymouth District, Representative in General Court, 11th Bristol District, Register of Probate, Bristol County, County Commissioners, Bristol County, County Treasurer, Bristol County. I don't think we need a motion to approve, right? It's just an announcement, or do you want a motion to approve? I think it has to be approved. Yeah. Motion to approve, gentlemen. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. And, uh, Anything for uh, stormwater we'll discuss it next week. Department of Public Works, it's all next week. Town administrators, oh. report. Did, uh, Did you miss the AYSA? Oh, yeah. oh I'm sorry. That's okay. AYSA. That's under me. Correct. AYSA soccer field maintenance plan. So uh, a few years back, this town meeting was kind enough to appropriate some money and for a soccer field over at the schools. Um, that soccer field has been completed. It's, um, I think that there were some future plans to do additional soccer fields. Selectman Wona, you were a big proponent of the soccer fields for the AYSA. 
Um, mm -hmm. And you spoke at town meeting on it. Do you, do you have any? Yeah, I can speak to, on yeah, this. I'll speak to it briefly. Yeah, first of all, uh, Mr. Gasper, thank you for your past support of this issue. Um, and so where where the project is now, and I've you know sort of uh, the deal that I had with AYSA is I would help them navigate through the town you know the town function and, and that process, just provide advice. And um, so where the project stands now is that the work was completed. Uh, thanks in part to uh, Dan Menard and the DPW. Um, I think that that project was, had to go out, uh, not done with town employees and DPW. That project would be north of $200,000. Um, 75 grand was appropriated. I believe they spent all in somewhere around 39. Wow. Um, and, and the thing looks fantastic. I've, I've had the, an opportunity to bounce around different communities and look at facilities. I look at sort of Mariner and Fairhaven as the gold standard beautiful um, uh, fields and this phase one which was completed looks outstanding um, this irrigation um, it's proper it's been properly graded there was a lot of volunteers Dave Devignan a number of people helped out and so I think in year one for phase one is making sure that the grass matures in an odd way it was it was fortuitous that there wasn't a spring season because the gla the grass has been allowed uh, to grow the summer months are critical and then going into the fall is when the season starts if it will if they do play right mm -hmm. so so anyway yeah. uh, AYSA has been a great partner uh, they have offered to do to provide uh, uh, money uh, manpower they've offered to do upkeep but I think it's the collective wisdom of the group that um, as many sort of professionals the folks who, who help to build it and uh, who know grass and Steve Tibbles plays a role in that to see that year one that the grass yes. matures yeah, properly. Point, right, right. Um, there is some additional revenue to look at phase two, uh, phase two, which the group thought that we would have to go for another revenue source, but based on the work that was already done, might be able to build a couple more fields with that phase one revenue, with mm -hmm. that phase one revenue, and then they'd be done. So um, I think what we're asking for is just to focus on the new field right now, to use our in-house professionals, such as Mr. Tibbles, um, to, to, to work on that, to get it to the point where it then we can look at it and see what needs to be done moving forward. But just want you to know AYSA, and they've you know spoken with Julie in, in the past with Brian, are willing to do anything and everything to be good partners. Um, and they provide such a great service. I mean, they've been in business for 20 years. There's been you know, on average, 400, 500 kids from a cushion of that law walk through those right, doors right. every Sunday, and they provide practice time for a hundred dollars a year, and, and that's a pretty good value. So, um, we just wanted to bring the, I wanted you to bring you up to speed, um, and you know, make sure that we have the running room to get this done. Do a look back, see what worked, what didn't work, um, but utilize uh, Mr. Tibbles and. Our you know, whatever in-house folks we can, just to make sure that the thing is done properly. And has he been receptive to this idea with yeah. uh, using? And I did. I did the talking because I just wanted you to know that I've. <laughs> oh yeah. I've well, this, I, I, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. putting my personal uh, reputation on the line for this project, and I felt I owed it to you, gentlemen, to mm -hmm. know of what my interest was. So Absolutely. And I understand your involvement with the, you know, with this whole project mm -hmm. from the beginning. So the idea is to to bring the. Uh, uh, golf maintenance team in yep. to uh, work on it, at yep. least for this year, or in the short term, or in the, you know, want to figure out something. So. Yeah, I mean, at least at least for the first year, if not um, longer, for the for the new fields, um, you know, making sure that everything is being maintained properly, and who better than you know our golf employees? So, yeah. um, Steve Tibbles has been really wonderful, um, and he met with us yesterday to look at the fields. Um, you know, he has so much knowledge when it comes to this, so he, he is also willing to work with them for like the fertilizing plan and the irrigation. Um, it's all over my head, but you know, making sure the right amount of water hits the field all the time. And um, so obviously um, at the same time, you know, golf is an enterprise fund. Um, it's under the Board of Selectmen, um, but I did let the, um, the um, golf um, committee know that you know we were interested in this and making sure that there were no issues on their end um, 
any costs that would come along with it if um, you know Steve has to send one of his staff over mm -hmm. um, the cost for the payroll would be covered um, through the school um, which ultimately is reimbursed by AYSA so um, golf committee members had no issues as long as um, you know it was outside of golf time it didn't interfere with them and they weren't having to pay any costs so. yeah, sure yeah I, you know I, we, we have one field existing right now right well so what you do is you you've got one Beautiful field, which is the new field, mm -hmm. and then you've got basically dirt, right, yeah. for the remaining fields. Mm -hmm. You know, so what happens is, come, you know, by by August, you'll go to the school and you'll see it. You'll see you'll see what's new and what's old, right? right? right. So mm -hmm. the, the old stuff is going to be burnt out. Um, you may get a little bit of growth in September, and then the rain comes, and then it basically turns to mud, mm -hmm. right? So that's basically yeah. what will happen. But to the I guess would be the uh, the west. Um, you, you'll have a beautiful field, and you'll see. Yeah. So, because well, we put irrigation into that we field, so we're talking basically you know, having Mr. Tibbles maintain the new field. We'll call it just a new yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I know there might be some future plans for expansion. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe doing the old fields over mm -hmm. again and redoing that. At, at that point, we'll have another conversation on you know what kind of team do we need to be really maintain them because I, one field I think is manageable right now yes yes um so in, and I, I I don't know I just I understand the, the back charts thing but you know we we I think golf needs to keep in mind that we do a lot of work through our DPW for golf so on the other hand one hand washing the other maybe you know I understand they have fertilizer costs and everything else and we can do that but I mean if he's spending an hour or two a week to do the field you know, don't nickel and dime AYSA over a couple hours worth of labor and, and stop penny pinching every little back charge. I mean, yeah, fertilizer costs money, I get it, and we can't take that from a, a golf enterprise fund, so you can back um, charge for the materials. Yep. But as far as that small labor expense at this point for one field, you know, I, I'd rather not. I think it's complementary to everything that we've done in the town with shared resources where, you know, Jim Barron, the kids are going over here and doing this and doing things at the school and, and DPW goes off and does cop outs at the golf course. I mean, it's, so it's, it's just, it, we're all as one really, right, is what I'm trying to say. So let's not get too caught up in a nickel and yep. diamond right now. I think when we get further expansion, we have multiple fields. We'll come up with a different solution then for maintenance of the fields, but for right now, I think Mr. Mr. Chairman, the other thing too is, you know, it's a um, the the trick is, AYSA is willing and able to put time, resources, um, but what they're working with the school department is having some type of long-term commitment and knowing knowing that you know AYSA is saying, hey, look, we're all in. Um, and I think they're looking for a three-year agreement to show that, you know, after year one of putting all this effort in, then they're not going to get bounced out for some other soccer club or whatever, right? So, I know that wouldn't be the case, but you know how this works. Yeah, no, same token, the school department, rightfully so, wants to make sure that, hey, if we're going to be partners here, AYSA has to, to make sure that they're, up, you know, they're upholding their end of the bargain. Yeah. And I think the model is, what the town has with the fame and the Krishna Baseball League. If you look at Pope Park, and, and that, that, that's the gem of the area. I mean, I go there. It's a lot different than when I was a kid. Right, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, what's happened over the last several years. years. <laughs> you know, you've got an incredible that's organization right. mm -hmm. that works well with the town. You've got two towns working together. Um, and I think that's, that's the business model that we want to replicate, and I think we're, we're close to there. We just got to get this field established, look back, see what works, and as long as we're open-minded throughout the process and, and look at the overall mission, which is to provide a great um, facility for the kids. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, a, it's a proud moment for the town. When people, taxpayers walk oh, in there and they feel good, they look at that field compared to what it used to be, mm -hmm. and they're gonna feel good about paying their, their knowing that their tax dollars are going to something that's, that's um, you know, benefit useful. the community yeah. as a whole. So, right. I mean, we put the parking lot in over there to keep right. people off the roads when soccer yeah. was yeah. going yeah. on. School departments. That was all right. part of that project mm -hmm. when we were redoing the soccer field um, to, to get people off Middle Road from mm -hmm. parking. So that's we knocked down a lot of those trees, cleared out the front. Um, a lot of those trees were dead. Um, in mind for people that love trees, but <laughs> we have a lot of dead trees out there. So we we created that parking lot and it's been it, it, it is it's an asset other, to the community. One other piece of it, I don't know that people really know about it. You've got a beautiful walking path that didn't exist that was part of this project. And there are people I know that are walking 
utilizing that mm -hmm. walking path. They were walking when we were there That we never had that never yeah. had that opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. And that was part of this project. Dan Menard mm -hmm. in the school department. So it's you know, it's it's, it's a really good project. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm off the soapbox. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. <laughs> Ms. Hebert, All town right. administrator's report. All right, I got a few things, so bear with me. Um, first thing I have, I'm, I'm gonna read from um, Chief Richmond. Um, he wanted to update the Board of Selectmen that both Detective Sergeant Keith Ashley and Detective Jeremy Fonts were recently sworn in as Special Deputy United States Marshals. This is in conjunction with their new membership in the New England Electronic Crimes Task Force. The group is a federal task force spearheaded by the United States Secret Service. Sergeant Ashley and Detective Fonts were recruited for the task force directly by the Secret Service based on the detective's intensive investigation of a recent ATM fraud case, which I think you guys all remember. Um, this should be considered a great honor as only a handful of municipal police officers in the state currently serve on this task force. The detective's participation in the task force operations will be strictly secondary to their primary duties and responsibilities with the Cushion Police Department. This opportunity affords the detectives a tremendous amount of previously unavailable resources for use in a cushion investigation. So I um, just wanted to read that and congratulations to, to those two officers. It's very commendable. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, um, Detective Fonts and um, Sergeant Ashley in the detective's office, I've been down to PD a few, di few different times and have gone in there and, you know, I'll tell, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's like they, they're just in sync with each other and they really work really really well together as mm -hmm. a team um, you know I hate to say that they're having fun doing it because it's a police it's a detective's position but you know they work very well together and I know on this particular case um, that they helped solve um, in, the, in the CIA that they're um, they're incredible incredible work and I commend both both of our officers very much so for their efforts and, uh, and it's a huge achievement for both of them so congratulations gentlemen yes kudos mr. chairman I'll just say this look you know this time where you know police officers are they're it's challenged you know their, their reputations are being challenged their their um, ethics are being challenged we had an incident in town last week where a police officer literally took a beating didn't retaliate, handled the situation. That's something that could have gotten re that could have gone real That's bad, good. real could quick. Have gone, right? mm -hmm. Exactly. And hats off to that officer. Hats off to Chief Richmond. Hats off to the department. So when I, you know, to, for handling that properly, um, and I don't, maybe it wasn't properly. I don't know. But the end result was mm -hmm. it didn't go bad, and it was a one-day news story, not a one-month news story. And so mm -hmm. hats off to them. I just thought correct. I'd make That's that correct. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think. Um, on the Chief Richmond's direction, we're, you know, I'm, I'm very satisfied where our, where our PD's at now. Mm -hmm. Seems mm -hmm. like the whole team's working very well together, but as far as these two um, offices go, it's uh, truly commendable Absolutely. to be recognized the way they have been. Ms. Hubert? Yes. Um, okay, so um, the next thing I wanted to mention, um, just so that you're all aware, um, you know, throughout COVID, uh, one of the biggest issues that we've had to manage is public hearings, um, how to keep people, uh, large groups of people safely in a spot together. Um, and the solution for us so far has been the school, um, you know, even having town meeting there um, was a success. Um, but understandably so, the school um, is asking that no meetings are scheduled after August 10th. Um, they have, they I got think. 14th on here. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, were they already cheaters well, four days? Yeah. yeah, she originally did say the tenth. They said okay. the tenth, but they said through the through the that week um, okay. they were fine with. But mm -hmm. um, ultimately, they're planning to get ready to reopen the school. I think um, you know, no one really knows what's going to happen in the fall. But as of right now, um, they're expecting to open the school, and um, you know. In order to do that, they need to have no public hearings coming in and um, constantly having to disinfect that area. So um, it's something that I think we need to consider. Um, I don't know um, that there's another easy space to hold a public hearing. Um, you know, the Council on Aging is the only other building that we have that um, might be large enough to hold a, a good group, but obviously that's, um, you know, it, it holds our, our sensitive population of seniors. So. Um, I just wanted to mention it and have you think about it um, that this is 
going to be an issue coming up that we'll have to work on and, and maybe it goes back to um, you know zoom public hearings as needed as we did before we kind of reopened yeah it's public hearings of you know it's been tough um, depending on the actual public hearing right we talked about yep. this before zoning board of appeals normally you don't have a whole host of people in there and they can limit their agenda so that they don't have too many people in there um, planning board I know that we have uh, I think that they're going to be meeting planning board and ZBA on this proposal for the um, new commercial facility yep. new commercial new facility I, I don't know if it's yeah. if it's really going to be called that so I'd rather not use that okay um, the new commercial facility over here mm -hmm. um, the proposal and the variety stuff so the, do you know if they're, they've been scheduled for that ZBA planning. and planning ZBA yeah. is planning is not yet so you might we might want to contact can we send a memo out to planning and zba and anybody else conservation that's going to have public hearings with this and let them know that the yep. deadline for public hearings and the board's going to have to figure this out um <laughs> zb to council the problem with figuring out a new new place is well, we're limited right with the size of our buildings and the rooms that we have mm -hmm. and, right. and Ms. hebert mentioned council on agent and we haven't opened council on agent back up to our seniors um, I'm sure that uh, Ms. Hebert and I will be having a conversation with Ms. Sylvia very shortly on trying to figure that out. Um, and it is a vulnerable population that's there, but we don't know when she plans on doing reopening. So if we were to go and have public hearings, and you know, the capacity is 85 in that building, according to the fire chief, the last time we spoke to the fire chief. But then you have a limited capacity there as well because you have to do six foot social distancing right. and things of that nature. So how many can you really fit inside the council on agent at that point? Um, Ms. Hebert and I had a quick discussion on that is, is maybe we open um, she, I think you talked to Chief Gallagher on is maybe you open the fire department up because um, they take the equipment out, lift the doors. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps you put a, a tent on the back side of the building. We don't know this yet on what we need to do or how many public hearings we're going to have that's going to demand that much space. Um, but the Board of Selectmen, because of that commercial facility, the proposal that they're putting in is we have a land use public hearing that we're going to have to do as well. Um, so That's we right. need to figure that out as well and when we when we would do the public hearing you know, I was hoping that you know planning would go through their process with this commercial facility being proposed for the corner of Wing Road and Main Street and CBA would and they get through those parts of that project first and then kind of come to us as kind of last notch Right, for the land use license that we're going to have to give them. We were kind of, uh, kind of limited. Yeah. So, I mean, we got the council on aging that we could do them there if Miss Sylvia is not looking to open it up. And then we could we could talk to Chief Gallagher about going in. We were supposed to get, we did a reserve fund transfer for some fog machines, and I don't think we received those yet, or maybe we have. We did, we, we put did. in more. But we have some that we could actually go in. If we were to use the facility, we could go in and and smog them and, and yep. disinfect the facility before we opened up to our seniors and make sure that that place was secured, right? Absolutely. And um, so. just um, this morning we had a department head meeting and Chief Gallagher brought up where he had mentioned having the, um, being able to open up his facility and he already got some concerns from staff um, since they've lived there. So yeah, I it's think a, it's a real it's concern. Too. Yeah, you know, and, and so we, it, it's good to think out these ideas and um, hopefully we find something that works but yeah it's like you you know you keep going down and well I, well I do oh, I'm sorry mr. mr. DeRoche go ahead. I do have a question the school department is concerned but they've you, you know we haven't established a uh, plan yet and also I'm assuming that if we do establish a plan that that area of the school is it going to be used utilized because we're talking about students going back eating at their desks that that is the cafeteria area I'm, I'm saying where we had the town meeting mm -hmm. and we saw that we could put 60 70 chairs in that mm -hmm. whole area will that area be utilized if school goes back yeah I and think if, okay no right. you can continue well if it isn't going to be utilized isn't there a way to just quarantine or or cordon off that area of of the building to to be utilized for because we're also going to have to have a public meeting about the school roof right. we need a forum on that and we need a forum on the um, on the land use license for the guest you know, for the commercial Proposed. property so, so let me ask you this do we have so. to do these things at a town building so for instance when we 
could we utilize the Century House facility, right? You're gonna pay for it, yeah. but you know, you do it there, have a meeting there. Um, maybe, Julie, what you could do is, you're doing this COVID reopening mm -hmm. working group. Put that into account, put that as something, come back with a recommendation, you know? While there's good weather, maybe it's outside. I don't know, you know, so maybe put that as part of the thing to come back with to the board. I, I, mean, I think yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with selecting the owner anymore. I mean, it's you know, it is it is a large facility. If if the owner doesn't have a problem with renting out some space, you know, we we, we would be diligent on how many times we're going to be in there doing things, or we try to set it up so planning conservation. Anybody else had it, we could just do it. Bing 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 bing. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not in there trying to clean his facility. You know, you know, if we go in one week, the next guy goes in the next week. I don't think he's going to want to have that, but. I couldn't agree with it, uh, select with Mo and I already more. It's, it's a great idea because if you schedule a public hearing and it's out here in the parking lot, who knows what the weather's going to be next week? I, I'm not that good to predict the weather, right? So I think that it's got to be somewhere that you have the ability to be indoors so you don't have to be canceling public hearings. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is an option that we can uh, we can speak to them. I, I mean, I don't have a problem speaking to Andy um, yeah. and seeing if he'd be open. Right to doing something with the town. Um, I, I have no problem speaking with him. Yep. So yeah. I can speak to him and see if he's open for that. I would think he would be because he, I've been talking to Jeff about him having small funeral, like, you know, people after funerals and things like that. He's, you know, he's talked to Joe, so, um, you know, from the Board of Health and he, he is willing to do things, so I'm, just, I'm sure. I mean, yeah. somebody, yeah. you know, Approach I mean, uh, those are those are the kind of places right now that are struggling. Stripping, I mean, it, right, it, it really it, it's look. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. It sucks for most businesses that can't reopen. I mean, mm -hmm. what are these okay. people doing? You know, it's it's very difficult with COVID, and you know, I've said it numerous times. I wish it would just get the hell out of you, but that's not the way that it works. So it's just it's tough on people that do own businesses and they're trying to provide you know a living to the family and. You know, he's got a lot of employees over there and he can't do anything. So, you know, hopefully he applied for the PPP program and, you know, he's got some funds coming in for that. But let's, 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 well, let's, let's entertain let's, that idea. I just have one quick question. Has the school uh, department uh, given any indication of when they're going to decide or when they have to decide by yep. the, to see if the kids are going back to school? So, um, the last I spoke to Dr. Bailey, um, they need to provide proposals to DESE by July 31st. Um, they need a proposal for having everyone back to school full, physically, full time. Um, one that would be a hybrid of having some kids in school and some kids remote, and then one that's remote only. Um, but there's, you know, in talking to the school, my sense is that I don't know, I don't think they're going to get much guidance from DESE. Everyone has to submit the plan. And the plan is all well and good, but at the end of the day, DESE is most likely going to say, okay, pick a plan and go with it and not give any right. real guidance. Right. Um, and right. there's so much involved, um, you know, part of my meeting um, at the school was the soccer field and part was going through this. And, um, you know, there, there's so much to consider aside from, you know, just in, having the kids in school or remote. Um, if they have to have less desks in the classroom because they're, you know, so many feet apart, um, there's a storage issue of where you put all the desks and all the you know bookshelves and everything that they have to pull out and like you said with lunch um, I'm not sure what the plans will involve yet in terms of going in and having lunch in, a, in the cafeteria or eating at their desks but um, if they eat at their desks then you know that where, where does the teacher eat and the, does the mm -hmm. teacher get a break and there's so many things she eats there's at no the answer he eats at the desk too right the kids yeah are it's like no, everything it's... there's no easy answer and I, right. I really right. feel for you know not just our school all schools right now that are trying to um, come up with the answers so um, mm -hmm. we, we discussed this at the department head meeting earlier today um, and you know we have great staff here at the town hall um, and so um, many of our you know relevant department heads um, board of health the fire chief the building inspector um, as, as examples they're all willing to work with the school and try to um, collaborate you know like you said you know everybody might have a, a new opinion somebody might come up with something like Century House that um, is a great idea that no one else thought of so um, you know we're we're hoping to work with the schools and in whatever capacity we can to you know collaborate and you know we're one community so um, yeah. try to come up with an answer and be as much help as we can be yeah but unfortunately no they don't know yet okay. <laughs> 
So um, the next thing I had uh, moving on is, um, I, I've already let you know, but just to let the public know, the um, part-time agent was hired for the Board of Health. Um, his name is Pat Hannon, and um, he's fantastic. Um, and I think um, Mr. Chair is looking to, um, you're looking to have him on our next agenda to come in and just talk to the Board of Selectmen. Um, but this individual has a ton of experience um, and it, it was it was just really wonderful to talk to him um, and you know all of the hard work that the board has put in um, the board of selectmen the soil board um, the you know Joe at the board of health um, so many people have collaborated and really worked hard to get um, you know some a good hold on PJ Keating and make sure that they're complying with everything and um, when you when you speak with this individual um, it, it's he, he has it all under control he already looked up he knows all the permits um, he's researched all the complaints that um, residents have had against PJ Keating over the past two years and he's planning um, and, and researched whatever issues they have um, he's just very thorough and I've already been copied on many emails uh, between PJ Keating um, so it's just um, really heartening to know that the hard work that you've all put in is is going to be enforced and I'm gonna have him in at the next meeting Tuesday night's meeting for a brief introduction to the Board of Selectmen as well as the residents of a because I think it warrants that after everything we've been through with this uh, problem I'll call it um, I had the opportunity to yesterday or the day before to speak with him. I met him, introduced myself. It was a great conversation. I spoke with him for over an hour, so I could really get to know him. Um, he's already familiar with all, most of us. So by watching our meetings, he's done his homework and his due diligence, so it was nice to hear what he had to say to me. So I asked him if he'd be all right with coming in and introducing himself to the board and the residents of Akushnet. So everybody gets familiar with his face and gets to know who he is, and he said absolutely. So I'll have him in Tuesday for Quick Mr. Yes, I did watch his interview on or the interview of all three candidates on the Board of Health meeting, and uh, he would he was my choice also. So excellent, I'll write that. Excellent. Next, Julie, uh, chapter next 90. item. Sorry, I have so many. Chapter ninety. Just wanted to let you know we, we did get an update that um, chapter ninety money was released for um, FY twenty one, mm -hmm. and. Um, the amount that we were apportioned is $316,724. So, um, you know, I know other revenues are kind of up in the air, so hearing that we got this money is um, a good thing I wanted to share with you. Uh, Julie, yeah. how does that compare with uh, what we've gotten in the past? Is that uh, pretty similar? About the same? Down a little bit, but, no, slightly you know, yeah. 316 versus the 330, 340. Some years we've gotten 360, so, yeah. okay. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's better than. 200 yeah and it's not as you know it's yeah you know it, right. it's, it's less than what we normally would see but it's better than what we expected i guess we'll say yeah. it that way absolutely um and so then um i have the next item hamlin street bridge project update um just to give you a brief overview because this is something that started probably two years ago um maybe longer i mean obviously longer but uh, when we were finally awarded the um the project from the state um, and it's kind of sat idle for a little bit. So we have um, letters that were sent out to the property owners because there are various easements that the town needs to acquire um, in order for Mass DOT to move forward um, with the project. Um, we need to have all of the easements either donated or purchased by um, February um, because Mass DOT is looking to get started with their um, procurement in March and planning to do the project in the summer so um this in, in fiscal 2021 uh, yeah next 20, next summer March. yeah, yeah well, calendar 21 yeah yeah um right. so we did receive um two responses um where property owners donated the their easement and we're sending follow-up letters to the other two okay. um and so i'll keep you updated on that but um that's moving forward okay yeah. great um i don't have it on on here but i did want to mention two other things um back in back in, in may we um everybody received cares money um it was part of a, the package the stimulus checks um the town was afforded um every town was afforded a, a certain amount of cares money um to help assist with the costs related to um covid 
um, the town's portion um, that we were we are pre-authorized for is nine hundred and thirty two thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars um, and so um, back in June we had to do a, a, a quick um, application for money that we already spent on PPE um, but that being said there's there's a lot of funding left and this is under the guise of the board of selectmen so um, I did want to mention it quickly and um, just make you aware that um, I think it would be helpful to have some kind of discussion and um, you know possibly a group to kind of look through uh, what we have for expenses coming up and what we what we would need the money for in the future were, were we uh, given some of this money already? Were we given, uh, weren't we given uh, 150, 160,000? About 180, yeah. 180,000. Um, so that was to help cover costs that were already expended. Um, things like the foggers, the PPE, to all the disinfectants. Um, and I know the schools also had um, an expense for Chromebooks for all the students. So. Can, can this money be used by any department or requested mm -hmm. by any Under department? As long as it's COVID-19 related. Yeah, Under so the they, CARES Act. Yeah, they have a, a lot of categories. Um, it, it has to be, yeah, it ha it's ultimately approved by the Board of Selectmen, um, but it has to fall under the categories. Um, this is also in conjunction with FEMA. Um, so we haven't applied for anything for FEMA yet, and FEMA is very, uh, it's a complex application procedure. Um, these two are almost opposites. FEMA, you have to go through and spend the money and detail it out for them and, and submit your application. And maybe a year and a half to two years later, you'll get reimbursed up to 75% for eligible expenses that they deem eligible. Um, so it takes a while. Um, for CARES, as you know, even with the stimulus checks, they wanted to get money out to people in municipalities as soon as possible. So um, we had to fill out, like I would call it a soft application. Um, <coughs> all the categories are broken out in detail, but they didn't ask for backup. They said, how much are you, have you estimated that you've already spent or will spend through the end of June in these categories? We filled out an amount, they gave the money right away. Now we have the hard part of going back. You know, I told uh, Melissa, uh, fun time for you. Right. <laughs> um, now we have to go back in and give them the detail and if we, if they gave us too much money, we have to give it back. Um, if, if we need more, we can get more. Um, and obviously we have that limit of the, the 932,000. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this is, it's it has to, Eligible expenses are under, you know, certain categories. It has to be COVID related. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously we want to make sure it, it's a lot of money, but it only, it, it's, it's not a lot in the big scheme of things where, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So we want to make sure that however it's spent, the Board of Selectmen have um, all the information and make the right decisions. So Ms. Hebert and I, if I may, Ms. Hebert, yeah. we talked a little bit about that this morning as well as early this afternoon. And um, in the early part of August, well, she'll send out a communication with all the department heads, the, the public safety and uh, everybody, just to see if there's anything that they're out there um, that they have expenses for that could be part of this program um, within reason. I mean, we can't use it. I already asked Ms. Eva, can we do it for budget shortfall? She was like, no. So I was like, all right, that blows that money because we know we were anticipating the shortfall from the state revenues of 410,000 bucks. So, um, yeah. but. <laughs> Um, I think in the early part of August, Ms. Hebert and I are going to go to the school department and um, have some conversations with Ms. Flynn and Ms. Uh, Paula Bailey over what their needs would be as well and sit with public safety and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, engage with them and see what it is that they are really looking for and then we'll bring it from the board. Mr. Chairman, I think you know, we talked about the reopening plan, right, this working group and what I'm hearing. So basically everything we're going to be doing is COVID related. Pretty much. So maybe as part of this, I think we should establish a sitting COVID-19 task force. And Mr. Chairman, as you as chair, you know, maybe lead that effort with looking at this, this type of stuff. Well, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just feel like we should have it to just say, hey, Julie, you go figure that out. That's a huge, that's a huge job. So yeah, I wasn't. I already hands, told her that I would do it. Whether in all hands on deck, yeah. look yeah. at the folks. Look at your your personnel here at town hall. You know, somebody from the school department, finance committee, all your your department heads, and it's got to be an ongoing effort because it's going to be so first it's reopening, then it's going to be looking for money, then it's going to be what happens in the winter. You know what I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. going to be a constant thing, and not to create another committee, but I just think it's something that. You know, well, it's a temporary board. thing just to bring back to the board and say this is the list of things that everybody came Whatever up with it and then it yeah. takes a motion for us right. to approve the expenditure. Right, right, so right. I already told Ms. Eber she wouldn't, I would not 
leave her and the, you know on her own. I've been working closely with Ms. Hebert on on all the topics that we're putting on the agenda to make sure that we have a. Uh, you know our p the pieces together that we need to present to the board and make sure that all the information's there and Miss Leonard as well. So we'll we'll be working on everything together and moving this forward. And I told her I said when we're ready we'll just we'll make sure that we get everybody involved. As you said, everybody needs to be involved because we don't want to leave anybody out. Um, especially like council on agent, we haven't talked about reopening council on agent. We haven't talked about reopening library. So it's all hands on deck. We're going to figure this out. Everybody's going to put in, have input towards it, um, and then it'll come in front of the board for a broader discussion on how we allocate the funds. There's going to be a lot of money floating around in different resources. You know, they, you could yeah. get stuff for it just pays time and who knows, you know, and, and to have one person do it, maybe you come back as part of that recommendation on how we're going to deal with COVID-19. Yeah, everybody. We need to know what everybody's concerns are, not only for the next 30 days, but for the next six for months, next a year, year, whatever right. it's going to be, right? I'm going to look yeah. at this thing and say, that's why I don't want to just go, hey, here's $500,000 for you and leave us. We all need to sit down and think about and give, a, give all our department heads two or three weeks ample time to sit and, and ponder this and say, what are some of the things that may be needed? You know, fire EMS are probably going to need certain resources. So, mm -hmm. okay, this is what's going to be needed, police. And public safety this is what I'm gonna need okay no problem and put a list together and then we'll compile it and you know the list might come out to 1.5 and we have 800,000 remaining somewhere in that ballpark 750 whatever it is and we'll have to figure out how we distribute those funds at that point but everybody's gonna have input nobody will be left out um, not when it comes to this pandemic that's for sure I don't want to leave anybody else so we'll have everybody's input on it's, a, it's a truly fluid situation I mean, to make a plan right. and try to implement it 30 days out right. almost Changes. seems like it right Changes exactly every day. well you just got, I think I think but the important aspect of COVID-19 is let's not worry about where we're at today because we see I, I watch it all the time I see states reopening <laughs> and now I see those same states yeah. closing so it's just a basic it's 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 an overall COVID nineteen structure where you just look at it and say it's a pandemic. What is the needs, not the wants, what is the needs of it of getting us through this pandemic mm -hmm. um for the next year? Like Ms. So like I want to say, maybe not six months, but the whole year. Let's look at the whole year and say this is what we're gonna need as far as supplies go. Um, you know, and we'll figure it out. I mean that's that's really what it is. I, I can't I don't think anybody on earth knows and can say when this thing's going to come to an end i mean you think we could talk about vaccines mr roche we and i had this conversation in previous select board um, meetings you know whether it's a vaccine or a therapeutic or any of that stuff whether it's going to work how many people are going to go get it so we're, we're going to be dealing with this pandemic you know for the foreseeable future mm -hmm. so let's figure it out I anything have, else i do i'm sorry I have one more thing i'll mention it quickly i think i think i've talked to you all about this um it's something that's come up fairly recently, but um, Mass DOT also has a new Shared Streets and Spaces funding program. Um, it's a quick launch, quick build grant program um, to provide grants as small as $5,000 and as large as $300,000 for municipalities to quickly launch or expand improvements to sidewalks, curbs, streets, on-street parking spaces, and off-street parking lots in support of public health, safe mobility, and renewed commerce in their communities. Um, and so I have a lot of information and I can share that with you all, but um, I, I did want to bring this up. It has um, applications are accepted from June 22nd through September 27th. So we have time to, to fill out the application. When's but, the deadline? I'm sorry, Ms. Um, September 27th. So we do have time, but um, I, I think um, we obviously we definitely want to apply for this and get as much money as we can. Um, I know there have been discussions about um, Slocum Street, um, so, I, <laughs> so I don't know if that's... What? <laughs> I, yeah, well, so so Missy even mentioned it to me, and we, we applied for some other grant, but it was... It was, I don't know, probably prior to COVID-19 or maybe in the beginning of COVID-19 and Ms. Hebert called me and said, do you know of any projects for so-and-so because the deadline is today at 4 o'clock and I'm like, okay, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I said, yeah, Main Street and, and um, Slocum Street sidewalks, right? Yeah. That's projects. Um, and then she mentioned this to me again, and because there's sidewalks in the in the, the riverfront down there, the river park that we've mm -hmm. done and cleaned up all of that, and we have sidewalks up here on South Main Street, the sidewalks on Slocum Street are decrepit. I've I've gone and, and visited numerous residents on Slocum Street of the 
decrepit sidewalks. And I said, we've talked about it in the past, if there's any opportunity in the future to give, go after grant money, I promise I'll be the first one to mention Slocum Street. So again, the first thing that comes to my mind right away is, we're applying for it, Ms. Hebert, and we're going after Slocum Street sidewalks. End of story. So if there's anything else that you gentlemen can think of that she can make a copy of that where some qualifying projects may qualify for, um, we could surely add that to the list and get it in there and see which ones we can go after and get. I mean, if we have five and we get one, that's great. Mm -hmm. If we don't put any, we ain't getting any, right? That's right. Um, so if there's anything else that we can think about, but you know, I, I, I do feel for all the people that use Slocum Street, it's been a disaster for, for decades and, and it just needs to be redone. I mean, it's, it's a disaster and, and, and we owe it to the people there. To, Mm -hmm. And, and for, for the people that are all in this area that walk and ride bicycles and everything else. So I'd like to see sidewalks get redone on Slocum Street at the very least. That's what we'll put in for. And so just so you know too, the, the projects, again, they're looking for it to be up and running quickly. So they want everything, the projects to be completed by October 9th. So. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if we're getting this, we're going quick and you'll see a change. We're going, it. man. We're, yeah. we're digging sidewalks up and we're, we're off. Mean, the deadline's September 27th. Yeah. And they want the project well, completed by October 9th. That's what they say, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, need, we need to apply now. Yeah. So, yeah. I have Henry on it, so. Yeah. <laughs> We got two or three. I'm sure the deadlines. That's probably that's a misprint. That's good. Might be a misprint. I mean, you can't go. Here's three hundred thousand dollars. Go do ten miles. Come on. I know. I am. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get it in as fast as we can and see how fast they'll give us money, and then that's right. we'll see how fast we can get out there and, and get the job done. Right. All right, so. and that's all I have. So thank you for allowing me to speak on that. All right. So. Uh, Next meeting will be next Tuesday. I mean, it's uh, the 22nd. 21, 21st. 21st. Is the 14th? Is the 14th? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, then it's the 21st at 5 p.m. And we will only have a few items on the agenda. Um, they'll be relatively quick. Uh, Mr. Manat, I anticipate being 20 minutes and a half an hour. He's got a few things that he'd like to discuss with the board. So I'm meeting with the DPW on Friday to try to vet some of this out. And um, so it'll make it that much easier on us when we get in here on Tuesday night. And um, because he's, he's limited with his funds. So we'll talk about it a little bit on Friday. I told him that we'll be meeting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then we'll figure out you know, the scope of him coming in for Tuesday. and give the board an update on where we've been in the last year, where, we're, where he wants to try to go in the next year, and maybe the board has, you know, some other ideas of their own. I know I have a couple of ideas that I'm going to be shooting by them and, and saying, you know, I think more funds need to be allocated towards different projects, but um, we'll see where that ends up taking us on Tuesday night. Anything on the selectmen's announcements, gentlemen? Uh, I'd just like to remind the residents to throw your plastic bags in the trash. Tonight, we just approved the transfer for $30,000 to, uh, to cover the increased amount of recycling this year. And as we've seen, uh, we're not the best recyclers in the state, and uh, every little bit will help to bring down the cost. Next year, we have to uh, uh, get new contracts with CMAS and with a uh, waste disposal company, and I'm assuming those costs are going to be higher than they are right now. So. Every little bit helps. They, they will, I will make this comment because I follow uh, individual companies, waste management being one of the largest um, recycling garbage companies um, on Wall Street. Um, I seen the CEO, I don't know, a month ago speaking about COVID-19 and how he's seen such a dramatic increase in garbage um, due to the nature of people staying at home. And he did say, you know, prices are going up. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're hauling a lot more. There's a lot more weight there being hauled, right? So, you know, we will see that increase. It's getting tough to absorb that increase. And I think you're spot on, Mr. DeRoche. That increase in recycling is not just the cause of more recycling. It's because of contaminated recycling. That's we pay, correct. so everybody at home knows, we pay roughly $115 a ton for clean recycling versus the 30 we used to pay back in the day. It's gone to $115 a ton, and when you give us a contaminated load, that $115 a ton goes to $150 a ton. Um, that's part of the contribution to that $30,000 increase. So, Mr. DeRoche, you've been very good at reminding our residents 
try to do a better job with clean recycling and those plastic bags are the biggest contaminant because it gets caught in the machine and, and they frown. Um, mm -hmm. We're being cited for it every time this happens with yeah, contaminated right. loads. And they do have cameras on the trucks that are watching this stuff go inside the trucks. And when they're unloading it, it's very simple to find out where it's coming from and what truck it's coming from and what your address is it's coming from because more than likely you have envelopes with your name right on it in your recycle bin. So just so everybody knows, you can't hide it. So we just asked to try to do a better job of recycling. I know it's, sometimes it's a pain in the butt, but. So let me ask you this, but I don't want to, I know we're trying to get out the door, but if we are seeing it more trash and stuff, I mean, there's the average person who's got one barrel, right? And then they go, okay, wait a minute, my barrels, my recycling is full. I gotta wait two more weeks, right? I mean, we gotta look at either encouraging people to get more recycling barrel, you know what I mean? Like, right. is what we're doing servicing the population if we're seeing an, an uptick and going every other week for recycling, is that, you know? Well, I, I, not fair to now, but we, no. I think we can look at it. I think no. it's something that we should talk to Mr. Menard Tuesday, maybe. Yeah. Mr. Wolner, I think it's a good thought. And I think maybe you bring that up to Mr. Menard next week okay. and say, hey, what are we, you know, are we okay? I know we, when we implemented the barrel system three or four years ago, it was we were allowed one garbage barrel, one recycle barrel per family. Right. And if you wanted an extra garbage barrel, we charged, it's basically 65 for garbage and 65 bucks for the barrel because that's what our cost is for the barrel. And then I think it's an additional 65 or 75 bucks, or maybe 85 bucks per ton, a ton for the year for extra disposal, for the extra barrel. So, um, you well, know, it's- one of, Yeah, well, one of the issues is, is this is, as uh, Mr. Gaspar spoke, is the contamination. People are throwing away plastic bags, whether they be uh, a sandwich bag or, or your plastic bag you get from the supermarket. Any plastic bag goes into the, people assume it goes into the recycling, but it shouldn't go into the recycling. It should go into your trash right. barrel. The, and yeah. that's costing us about 30%, 25%. You got small trash barrel. You know what I mean? Like I just think if, every, if stuff's full, people are gonna say, all right, well, I'm gonna right. stick it in this barrel. I don't care. Well, I mean, that's just human nature. That, 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 that can be, you know, once again, look at that, that could be a solution right. Right. in the sense. Trash is cheaper than recycling. Right. So, but I'm not promoting that. But I, I'm just uh, putting out there that it's the contamination issue that's causing us about 25 percent more than we estimate every year. Right. And we, and once again, end of the year we come by and we throw 30 grand, 40 grand at it, and it's something that people can, you know, if they're aware of it, they can, they can do it. You know, it's, it's instead of here, it goes there. So that, that's my only point on that one. Anything else, gentlemen? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are now adjourned. <laughs>